Oh, hi, and welcome to Minivan Camper Building with Leslie. Today I'm going to show you how I made this pantry, kitchen, storage, counter unit thing. Uh, pretty neat, isn't it? It's the perfect height to stand here and have a cold drink. If we traveled with bar stools, this would be a perfect place to set them up and hang out. No, we don't travel with bar stools, but if we did, this would be perfect for drinking a cold beer or a glass of wine. So what we do here mainly is we store everything we need to cook with, basically our food. We use it as a pantry. So we, that includes using this three drawer storage unit where we keep our plates and plasticware, our can opener and lighters, etc., that kind of thing. We also store over here a cooler as well. And then on top of the cooler, we have a storage space where we keep things like peanut butter and crackers, etc., dry goods. So we don't actually do any cooking right on this, and we don't cook in the van open flame and safety and all that. What we normally do is because we generally stay at real campsites, we'll take out everything here and we'll cook on a picnic table. So we'll bring everything out to the camp stove as we need it. But this is a great compact place to store it all. Do you wanna see how I built it? All right, let's go. The space I built my pantry in is right behind the sliding door on the driver's side of the van. The first thing I did is I removed the seats and I removed the floor liner. Then I closed the door and I got inside the van. This is where I made my measurements. The reason I did it here is because you want, obviously, the pantry to fit in the van with the door closed. So that will determine your measurements based on how much room I wanted to keep free inside the van, and also by how far I thought I could move the driver's seat back. The measurements for my base were 32 inches long and 12 inches deep. I also decided to make my pantry 25 inches high. I'll explain exactly how I came to that measurement in just a few minutes. But first, I want to tell you, these are not meant to be plans. I can't tell you exactly how far back you're going to move your driver's seat or any other measurements. But what I can do is I'll show you exactly what I did and what exactly my measurements were, so you'll have at least a place to start. If you like, stay tuned till the end of the video and I'll show you all my dimensions. Sounds cool? All right. The first piece I cut was the floor panel. I made some measurements for the hole in the center because I wanted to avoid those metal loops that hold the seats when they're installed. For this floor panel, I just used some scrap wood I had. It was a three quarter inch ply. Now, I don't want you to have any illusions that this pantry is actually level because it's not, but I was able to make it generally level by adding some scrap pieces of wood underneath to support it. Next, I made kind of a basic cabinet. Now, another illusion I certainly don't want you to have <laughs> is that I have any carpentry knowledge. I obviously, I don't. Am I suggesting this is the perfect way to build a pantry? I am certainly not. And you can make your own decisions about how this should be done better. However, for somebody with very little woodworking experience, I was still able to pull this off. The first thing I want to mention about this cabinet is that you'll see all these little nooks and curves cut in various spots, and those are to accommodate things like the door when it's closed, and also to be able to get out the door switch. Okay, I started with these two side panels and a back panel. On one side, I used a two by two uh, that I thought would help support the side panel. And on the other side, I used a couple of 90 degree braces. In addition to those, I also used a strip of one by two across the back to help stabilize and support the panels. I wanted to leave half of the back panel open. We should be able to reach some things from either inside the van as well as outside. 
After that, I started building some supports using a variety of pieces of wood that I had, mainly one by twos. This long vertical one by two in the center is not all the way to the edge of the floor panel, and that's to accommodate the side door when it's closed. So this is going to be constant measurement of where you can secure panels and supports around having the side door closed. Measure, measure, and measure again. To make the countertop, I just used some half inch plywood that I had lying around. The dimensions are 38 on one side and 41 on the other because I was trying to match an angle that I had built onto the shelf. Otherwise it could easily just be perfectly rectangular. And the width is 10 inches across. After I gave it you know, a light polyurethane, I screwed the counter down into the one by twos that you saw I used to frame out the cabinet. Now let's look at the shelves. There are two shelves in here, one on the left side, one on the right, and they're at different heights. I just slapped up a couple of short pieces of one by two in various places to use as supports. And for the shelves themselves, I used some of that plastic coated metal shelving. I cut it down using the metal cutter disc on my rotary tool. I also added these two panels to make sure that nothing would just roll off of the upper shelf. Here's how I secured the lower shelf. After laying it across the one by two that I installed on the vertical supports, I just stapled it down. And on the other side where it met the side panel, I just used a couple of those closet hooks. For the upper shelf, very similar. You can see where I installed those short pieces of one by two to support the shelf. On one end, I just used some hooks to support it. In the middle, I added a 90 degree brace in there as well behind the front panel just to give extra support to the center of the shelf. And on the other side, I just rested it onto the one by two. That pretty much covers the outside facing part of the pantry. Now let's talk about the part that faces inside. That back panel, that's actually secured to the floor panel by this two by two that I ran along the back. It also extends out past the floor panel and next to the bed frame, which is where I secured it. The bed frame is secured to the van itself, so none of this should go anywhere. Then I added this white strip of trim along the bottom, and that's meant to hold in any gallons of water or anything I'm storing on the bottom. There just wasn't going to be quite enough room, and so I had to extend the space where the white strip of trim hit by using a couple of blocks of wood. And for the storage space itself, I made a real simple X out of a couple of scrap pieces of wood and I secured them to the floor panel by using a couple of 90 degree braces. Right above that, I wanted to make sure that my plastic drawers could be accessible from the inside as well as the outside, but to keep them from falling in, I just added a twine with a hook and eye. Really simple solution. And to make sure that the back side of this open portion of the cabinet looks neat, I just cut a piece of fabric and I added some Velcro. It works great. I can pull this off and wash it anytime I need to. Okay, this is what determined the height of my pantry cabinet. Because we have this tabletop that stores away and we pull it out and secure it to the cabinet, it had to be at a comfortable height where we could sit on the bed that turns into a bench and use the table. 
My tabletop measures 18 inches wide, 27 inches long, and I just used a half inch ply. But the size of this was actually determined by how it was going to store behind the front seat. So as much as I could store behind there, that's how big I made the table. Now here's how that works. Along the pantry cabinet, I have installed this metal channel that's designed to hold the tabletop. And then along the tabletop, I have installed this other metal channel that fits into the one installed on the cabinet. It's a very sleek design. They fit together perfectly and they hold up the tabletop really well. The beautiful thing about this tabletop is that I can add a second metal channel to the back of the van on the bed frame and we can use it out of the back as well. So there you have it. You can see that this little pantry is called into service constantly and you can see how much it provides for us. It's one of my favorite parts of the van. And the only downside I would say is that because it's pretty much permanently installed, we're not able to put in the second row seat behind the driver's side. Now, that being said, we've designed this so we could pop in the second row seats if we need to, but we haven't done that at all. So I'll leave you with all the dimensions. So if you really want to geek out, here you go. It was great hanging out with you and I'll see you next time.